And we're back with another episode of the PCC Multiverse. This is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, and of course, the Lakers Fast Break. Truly appreciate you watching and listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, please give us that five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe. Subscribe today to get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air with the latest Pop Culture Cosmos, PCC Multiverse, State of Pro Wrestling, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and more right there on the Pop Culture Cosmos channel. Or like and follow our Facebook page. We post all the latest news right there for you at, of course, the Pop Culture Cosmos, indeed. But it wouldn't be a Pop Culture Cosmos without my good friend, indeed. She is a trooper getting through the all the audio and technical difficulties this evening. I tell you what, she is persistent, but <laughs> she is no less fantastic this holiday season. She's a good friend, indeed. you got to go ahead and check out what she's doing today with, of course, the Wizards and Wine, with Wild Beyond a Witchlight, and, of course, her hit show along with her husband, although, you know, we got to give more credit to her than him you know <laughs> don't tell robbie i said that I, is, of course your secret is safe even though he just walked by are you yeah yeah we yeah. could forget i have no earphones tonight so you're you're uh you're loud sorry robbie i'm just kidding <laughs> warhammer that's the great equalizer warhammer, warhammer. yeah warhammer. it's good in my books Yes, yeah, so, you know, if you ever get into a disagreement or you find yourself on the other end of a, the wrong end of the argument with him, just shout Warhammer and he'll just like, oh, it's okay. Everything's okay. Yeah. It is Melinda Barkhouse Ross and Melinda, great to have you here. Uh, truly appreciate your persistence in getting everything together uh, for tonight's show. It is going to be a really, really great show to talk about nothing but video games. And I'm so thankful that you're here to be a part of it. Oh, I'm happy that, uh, you know, we finally made some kind of connection. So you're getting that weird, like, perspective with, because I'm on my phone. So, yeah, I, I apologize for that. But No, it sounds good. Sounds really good. Yeah. Uh, it may come out echoey for you on your end, but it sounds good on ours. But before we go on, I want to go ahead and actually congratulate both you and Robbie on your anniversary. May you have Aww. many, many more happy years to come. Yeah, we we got married. So yesterday was my birthday. Today was her anniversary. So if he forgets one, <laughs> you had your yeah. 18th birthday yesterday. Yeah, yeah, eighteen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, eighteen. <laughs> Me, it's eighteen plus add on thirty five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Uh, yeah, I don't want to yeah. think about that. Yeah, but it's going to be a great show. We're going to be talking a lot of great things when it comes to the game awards. So many announcements, I didn't even know what's happening. They dropped a lot of bombshells on this show. And also, of course, we'll tell you who won. But you know what? I was kidding to the guys at the Lakers fast break. We were watching the Lakers game while the Game Awards was going on. I was toggling back and forth. And I said, it's kind of like an uh, actually a major showcase for a whole bunch of new games and their trailers. And they throw in some awards, too. But yeah. Really <laughs> that well, I mean, that's when you that's the time to do it, really, because that's when, excuse me, that's when your your audience is going to be the most captivated, right? So, absolutely, a little self promo, go for it. I also like the fact that you know they had the show, and when they go and cut to commercials, the commercials are for more games. Yeah, so the games that they announced were part of the show for the most part. The games that were upcoming that have already been announced that they have new trailers for. They would use that as commercials for the commercial yeah, break. That's smart stuff. That's just good, good, smart marketing. I yes. like it. Games, games, games. After one of the actually great YouTube channels out there, Chase After the Right Price, uh, they're known for saying games, 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 indeed. It is, of course, the PC Multiverse. It is Melinda Barkhouse Ross and me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching, listening. Truly appreciate it. Melinda, I've been wanting to tell you that our audience is just truly appreciative of how well you are on the show. I've gotten a lot of compliments lately on your just absolutely fantastic uh, performances each and every time out. And then they say, yeah, you're okay too, Joe. 
So there you go. <laughs> well, doing your end of it is a lot harder than doing my end of it. So you are an impeccable host, sir. My hat's well, off to you. Uh, thank you. I try. I try. But speaking of hosting, something happened along the way as far as Rockstar hosting a scheduled release of the GTA 6 Grand Theft Auto 6, the sequel to the second highest selling game of all time, an estimated 190 million units sold for GTA 5. They came out with a sequel. I don't know why they announced the trailer now. When well, I'll tell you why in a sec. But they had the GTA 6 trailer. It was going to debut in the morning on Tuesday. But somebody decided to leak it. And then another person decided to leak it. So Rockstar had to just cut them off for the past and just say, you know what? We're going to drop it Monday after, uh, afternoon, late e early evening late afternoon, that type deal. So what happened was they dropped it. Didn't matter. They still have no. over a hundred and what? Almost closing in a hundred and fifty. They're closing in on that million views on their, on their channel alone. So it's absolutely insane. People yeah. are just eating it up. It's the biggest video game trailer release of all time. And it basically starts off with a discussion with an inmate, a female inmate, in the, uh, the how should I say, the Leonida, based off of Florida, yes. penitentiary system, and having discussion with maybe, I think, a parole officer or something in regards to, to her crime background. And then it flashes to the life outside where she was part of a Bonnie and Clyde crime robbery, uh, as far as uh, type scenario. You see her with the getaways and going in and robbing liquor stores and things, things like that. But then you also get a wider view in the 90-second trailer of the world that GTA 6 is going to create. And first off, if you can get anywhere near what it looks like in that trailer, I would be thoroughly impressed because I'm you know me, I've these trailers are great, but they're most of them are just in-game engine stuff or cutscene stuff. They're not actual gameplay stuff. But if anyone can pull off the fantastic visuals I saw in their trailer, it's going to be GTA 6. Your thoughts, my friend, on Grand Theft Auto 6 initially, and we'll break down a little bit as far as what's going on in the world of Leonida. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that if they get the gameplay to be anywhere close to the the video that we have seen of the game, uh, it's going to be very, very impressive. And everything that I have read and all of the other commentary that I have seen on it um, has everybody has kind of agreed that if anybody can pull off really incredible graphics, it's going to be the people behind GTA six. Um, so that has me pretty excited about that. That's, that's really fantastic potential. I mean, and GTA five still looks good a decade later. Yeah. And they've updated you know? it several times. I mean, that's yeah. what happens when you have a, this is the, not the original games lives as a live service, but it's the, probably the, biggest representation of or at least one of them of games as a live service because it was just originally built as a regular retail $60 game but the world that they created the add-ons the updates the mods that have been put out there for it all the things that both the modding community and Rockstar have done to create a scenario where it's still a constant 10 years later is just absolutely amazing and I expect nothing less when GTA 6 comes out <clears throat> in 2025. Yeah, we still got a ways to go. But, I mean, we knew about Diablo 4 quite a while before mm -hmm. Diablo 4 actually dropped. So, you know, it, it almost feels like fair warning. Save your money now because we're going to take it all from you in 2025. <laughs> I just don't see the point, really, of bringing it out this early. To me, I just didn't see. I know there are actually when we, we talk about the game trailers that were showcased today, they did the same thing. We're just going to bring it out in 2025. I just were, you know, to me as a consumer, I'm just worried about 2024. When I start getting really, really amped up about games that are in 2025 or 26, a mass effect. We have no right. idea when that's coming out. That could come out like the next century for all I know. It's seemingly they just throw tidbits and breadcrumbs at you. So we don't know when that actually that's going to come out. But it's just seemingly very, ugh, it's just sometimes frustrating when you want a game so hyped up like GTA 6 
to be introduced and you know make telling people well you are going to have to wait at least a year if not more for this game that to me is quite troubling indeed well i don't think it's troubling i think that it's uh you know i think they have a year now to continue to build hype for the game mm-hmm. and they know i mean how long has it been it's been out since monday and 150 million views and counting like the it hasn't slowed down so i feel like they can get some goodwill from their fan base by releasing more little snippets of the game. I mean, the next thing that we're probably going to see is some kind of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as that looks great, then that's going to continue to, you know, give that little bit of appetizer to make you all the more hungry when the game finally comes out in 2025. I feel like it makes sense. It it sucks for people who've been dying and waiting for the game to come out for, you know, a decade. But um, I I think that it it makes sense. I think that it's even a bit of a proving ground um, for how the game is going to be received. And I'm sure that they're looking at feedback and I'm sure that they're going to be making little tweaks here and there over the next 12 months. Um, And then, you know, the game will be all that more beloved once it finally drops. Oh yeah. I expect a level of polish that very few games have. I don't expect them to do the same thing that they did with the grand theft auto collection. You know, that came out a couple of years ago that was absolutely terribly flawed right out of the get-go i expect a release like we saw with gta 5 where there was a lot of just love and affection for it from the get-go then they threw at you at a date down the line later on that whole gta online experience and built upon that and then the modding community got hold once it finally came out on pc and they're doing the same thing again here it's going to be out on all the consoles or on it's going to be out on the consoles before PC, they they made sure it specifically ignored the PC community with this 2025 release. So it'll probably be a while before the PC modding community can get their hands on it. And that to me, again, it, you can't say it's a misstep because it's Rockstar and it sold 190 million units in GTA 5. They did the same thing again by delaying it on P- PC. So they're just following their own game plan. So how can you fault Rockstar for anything that they're doing when it comes to GTA 6? Yeah, you know, um, all they have to do is really follow that blueprint and and it's probably going to be successful. And some of the things that you just saw, like I said, there was a Bonnie and Clyde, uh, you know, protagonist that you'll be playing through, but also as well, just the life, just the sheer things that you can experience is just touched upon real briefly And you have to go ahead and pick every detail you can in order to find out just some of the things that you'll be able to do in GTA 6. And it's just so amazing whether it's the uh, just the way that that rock star pokes fun at our society, whether it's social media, whether it's just the way we are as far as a glamour ridden society or things of that nature as far as just taking a look at life in Leonida aka slash florida i'm just uh just really psyched to see what's going on and what the hell how far they can do because if you remember vice city was the last time that they dealt with anything that looked or resembled like florida this is going to take place in that same realm but also expand much further beyond it uh, rumors of a, a disneyland like theme park and things of that nature have been talked about but yeah So, you know, the beaches have been talked about being so densely populated. You actually see visuals of that. Yeah, just amazing the things that GTA 6 could look like, especially with Rockstar. Like you said, give it an extra amount of time to work on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I I liked, too, that uh, there are there are like stills and little clips of like news type things happening in the trailer that are pulled directly from real life. Uh, like the alligator walking into the store that happened. And we, that was a news story that was on TV. So um, it's it's funny how the trailer for something so new felt so instantly familiar. And a lot of it, you know, you don't like to continue to drill on those stereotypes, but it, there are definitely parts of the trailer that are very much a Florida man, dot, 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 headline kind of situation. So um, I, I think that they're definitely in on at least that much of the joke. So that's good. So, so before we go to the break, I want to ask your thoughts on GTA 6. You have no problems with it. Everything seems to be fine, what you've seen so yeah. far. Is there any specific part that you like best about the 90 second trailer? 
Um, you know what? <laughs> and this is going to, I don't know, maybe this is just because of, of my perspective as a, as a lady. Uh, and I use the term lady loosely, but um, the, the scene on the beach and you see all of the different body types on the beach and all of the different bathing suits on the beach. And you've got like creepy men with cell phones who are filming people in the background and, and all of that stuff. As soon as that scene happened, I was like, well, go ahead, rock star. That's fantastic. So I don't know. It, did it stick out to me? Yes, obviously. Is, is it going to be a pivotal part of the game for me? Probably not. But it was definitely something that I appreciated in the trailer. I'm actually looking at it while you were talking about it. I actually coincidentally clicked on it because I wanted to make sure I had some notes ready. And it, sure enough, it came up on that picture yeah. of, uh, from the beach and the level of detail. You know, oh. it's, you know, the number yeah. of individuals that work at Rockstar, we don't know how many that is. They're very secretive about it, but it's, I'm assuming it's in the thousands and they'll need every one of them because to do the level of detail that you're asking for, or that they're asking to do for this game, different body types, like you're saying, it's not all the same NPCs or the same three or four different designs that you, you can go ahead and pay, you know, cut and paste cut and paste everywhere you want to put an NPC. This yeah. is something to the level of detail when it comes out like we've never seen. Yeah, absolutely. Even the guy that's panhandling with the little lizard on his shoulder, like that's just a cool little detail that, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Well, obviously people have picked up on it because, uh, you know, we're talking about it, but um, it's just a, it's just a really cool, you know, thing that shows that they're putting uh, to me a lot of care and thought into the game. So to me, it's only an indication of, of really good stuff to come. I'll tell you what, I'm excited for it. And I know you are as well. It is, Grand Theft Auto 6, it is the sequel to one of, the, actually, the number two best-selling game of all time. And I guess from, basically, from a console standpoint, unless you really want to go ahead and Minecraft, that's kind of a different way if you evaluate as far as sales are concerned. I'd probably say, if you want to say the best-selling game of all time, you could throw out the Grand Theft Auto, but actually on sales, on volume, based off of PC and other platforms, Minecraft has actually done a little better, but it is the number two selling game of all time. It is GTA 5 sequel, GTA 6. The trailer just dropped. I actually had a chance to go ahead and drop it onto the Facebook page for Pop Culture Cosmos. So if you've not seen it yet, you're not part of the 150 million on Rockstar's page alone on their YouTube site who haven't seen it or seen it somewhere else because I'm sure it's been viewed 150 more times, million. Yeah. <laughs> from somewhere else, from other places that have shown it off, please go ahead and check out the link we've got for you. Facebook right there at Pop Culture Cosmos, indeed. Well, my friend, there's still much more to talk about on today's show because the Game Awards just happened. We're here in the aftermath of the Game Awards. Do you want to talk about the winners and losers, or do you want to talk about the trailers and reveals shown off in today's event? Ooh. That's a tough one. Can we can we can we mix it up? Can we go like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit and of this? Since you are my fellow host, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Do you want to start with the big stuff first on the awards? Or do you want to start with the little stuff first? Oh awards? gosh, you know what? Waiting for the big stuff is the worst. So yeah, let's get the big ones out of the way. Okay. The big one out of the way, of course, is the game of the year, as voted on by several members of the media. And the game of the year went to... It's no surprise. <laughs> well, for those Zelda fans, which at one time Zelda was coming in as, you know, up until, what, July, uh, was yeah. the favorite uh, because it had scored so well. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder was a great uh, scored game, but not, not in that same realm. Resident Evil 4 Remake, it's a remake. Remake should not be on this list because it is a remake of something that has already came out. So it should not be a game of the year candidate. Uh, Marvel re remakes or remasters should never be part of the game of the year candidates. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man Two had a lot of, of weight behind it, and and Insomniac did a great job on it. Alan Wake Two's visuals are so well done. I know it's a horror game. I know you said we didn't talk about it, but I said I talked about it with Josh because he's an Alan Wake fan. I know. Right. It was a horror game. You didn't really want, you know, you know like, I'm like, I'm not talking about Alan Wake 2. <laughs> the visuals on that, whenever you get a chance, it's absolutely stunning. But the winner is the game that upended everyone. Is the big yeah. 
this year. It is Baldur's Gate 3 based off of Dungeons and Dragons. So that's mm -hmm. a, for Dungeons and Dragons lore. But it is Baldur's Gate 3, which absolutely took home a great amount of prizes to, so far in the awards season so far. Your thoughts on Baldur's Gate 3 winning the big prize as the game of the year? I honestly, I, I think that they chose correctly. Um, I, I, there is not even with how quickly the chatter around Diablo Four died down. It hasn't died down yet for Baldur's Gate Three. People are still talking about it like the game just dropped yesterday. Uh, and to me, that was the biggest indicator that I could see of what was probably going to happen in that category. I mean, you know, I, I don't. Any, ever, all of my gaming friends, if you go and you look at like what they're streaming on Twitch and, and all of that kind of stuff, they're all streaming either Baldur's Gate 3 or Diablo 4. But more of their time is spent with Baldur's Gate 3. So, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I, I think that they got it right. I will tell you right now, though, mm -hmm. I'm so happy for Baldur's Gate 3. I think it deserved every single bit of awards yeah. it gets this season. It's such an, a massive game. I can't wait to get into it. It has RTS features, but also action features. I think it's going to do enough for me. I'm told, I joked to Magic Man, Sean Grice, that on the Lakers fast break that I was allergic. My doctor said I was allergic to RTS games, but uh, actually just, I have never really cared for them. I think this is one, the first one that I'm going to get into. And now that the Xbox is going to get their hands on it uh, and Xbox players are going to get their hands on it, and by the way, if you've not got an Xbox, I told you this, and everybody out there that wants a, a super deal on Xbox, the Xbox Series X has been reduced for the holiday season to $350, $100 below the Black Friday price. So if you can't find a reason now to get one, you won't, I'll tell you what, that's crazy, but you're just a PS lover, so I know you're crazy. But uh, yeah, it is just amazing. So go out, get yourself an Xbox Series X for $350 and get Boulder's Gate 3 if you haven't played it already because it's an amazing game and I think it's well-deserving of everything that it does. So, oh my gosh, just an amazing game, great awards. But before we get into any awards, more awards, I want to go ahead and touch on um, one couple of the reveals, the big reveals. Yep. Uh, I want to go ahead and hit a PlayStation one first, just to be in a little bit of on your side of the fence. And that okay. was some free God of War Ragnarok DLC is coming out next week for you, Melinda. Uh, yes. It's called Valhalla, and it's out next week. What are your thoughts on a surprise free DLC expansion coming to God of War Ragnarok? I mean, that's really smart, especially because there's probably going to be a PS5 God of War bundle under my Christmas tree this year. Nice. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I, I don't know that for sure, but that's what I've asked for from Santa. So, And I think I was pretty good all year, so I, I have a pretty good feeling that I could almost lay my bets on it. But Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, if that's the case, it is definitely going to be making a great game in God of War to Ragnarok even better and I'm yeah. very happy for those people out there that always nice to see when they give out free DLC you know not having you pay an extra 10 or 15 dollars for it I think yeah. that's a lot of class and a great move by PlayStation because PlayStation has been known to nickel and dime you and raising the subscriptions and all that stuff this year that's far as making it more expensive for the consumer they actually did and raising the price of the PS5 they act in certain areas of the world. They actually did something right in providing free DLC for God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, they they desperately needed a little bit of good press because I have not heard a lot of good PlayStation press in the last couple of weeks. Speaking of good press, mm -hmm. hopefully Marvel is going to get some better press because as we you know, Spider coming off the success of Spider Man 2, the Marvel is actually on a roll now because the Avengers did not do well in the video game land, but Spider Man 2 has. It's been a big hit for Sony. What will Bethesda do when they just announced a new Marvel's Blade in development at Arcane Studios? Oh, Making well, I'm just gonna Death Loop and Dishonored. That's gonna yeah. be amazing. Yeah, can I can I pre-order that one yet? Well, it's Bethesda. They did not 
tell you exactly where it's going to be located at. As far oh, okay, as it's fair. going to be an Xbox exclusive. They did not say it's an Xbox exclusive, but remember, but it could Microsoft. Be. It could be. Mike, if you look at the trailer at the very end, it just says it doesn't say it doesn't say what platforms it's going to be on. So right. we'll have to wait and see if they do make it an Xbox exclusive or not. But one game they did make an Xbox exclusive is from Hideo Kojima, who announced tonight a brand new game that everybody is now going to be anticipating for with great, great, great uh, affinity. And that is entitled OD. And a collaborator on this game who showed up at the Game Awards tonight to announce it along with Hideo Kojima, the guy behind so many great games, including the long-running Metal Gear series. And that right. is, you know, the guy with him tonight on the stage was none other than award-winning director Jordan Peele as a collaborator on the project. Your thoughts <laughs> on that? Yeah, Jordan back up the Peele. Brink. Yeah, back up the Brinks truck, right? Back up the Briggs truck, but this is an Xbox project, so this is going to be an Xbox exclusive. OD uh, in parentheses overdose, so OD as an overdose. Looking forward to seeing what that's going to be all about. It's from the brilliant minds of Jordan Peele and Hideo Kojima. Those guys go out there with their creativity, so I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing what's going to go on with OD when it comes out for the Xbox down the road. <clears throat> Xbox, Xbox. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> also, as well, before we hit the break, I want to go ahead and talk about one more award, which I'm going back and forth on, specifically because you're asking for it. Yeah, the I like best, it. Best narrative. Best narrative yeah. was not Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, <laughs> Final Fantasy 16, Spider Man 2, or Baldur's Gate 3, surprisingly. Yeah. It was Alan Wake 2 which will tell you about the engrossing story. If there's ever a horror psychological thriller movie that you might want to get into, hmm, Alan Wake 2 might be the thing for you, Melinda. That's the one, huh? Might be. Might want to take at least look at some videos of it on YouTube and then maybe think about it. Maybe think about it because it's, it's been a pretty good hit for Remedy. Uh, if you remember their last game, Hit Game Control, which earned several Game of the Year awards previously, this is something that absolutely a lot of people are enjoying. So Alan Wake 2 does win the best narrative as far as the story is concerned. It sees the vantage point, in this case, not just from the protagonist, Alan Wake, who's a author going on a psychological trip, uh, unlike anything we've seen in video games, but also from the perspective from an FBI agent uncovering a mystery so it goes back and forth so it's definitely something i think people should check out definitely something uh, i think people should support because an artistic game like this that is thought of in such high regard please needs to be supported because these games when they get made it's always iffy if they get supported continuously because they don't always sell the best as long as they sell enough that's what counts melinda yeah, that's it's usually what it comes down to. So, uh, but yeah, I mean that sounds interesting. I um, I can't remember. Anyway, I was gonna I was gonna go off on a, on a bit of a tangent, and I'm gonna try not to do that tonight. Um, but there was another game that I played, Sinuas. Yes, and what? yes, Hellblade Two. Absolutely, that was also shown off. That is also an Xbox exclusive. Mm. You know, because this is the sequel to it, and it is an Xbox exclusive, and it is absolutely looking sensational. Did you see it the the video for it tonight? It is. I didn't the, see the video for it. No, I didn't see that one. When you get a chance, take a look at the visuals. Take a look at the character models and designs. Very few games. It is like up in that upper tier. Maybe like three or four games I've seen out there in this generation have the level of detail in their characters. As we see from Hellblade 2, they showcased another video for it, uh, announcing, uh, well, not announcing because it's just wanted to go ahead and it's a game that's already been announced. But yes, it absolutely looks fantastic. And I'm hoping for a 2024 uh, release date for it. I'm going to go ahead and get you the, uh, the, the news on it right now as far as Hellblade 2 release date. Looking forward to seeing it. Senua's Sacrifice. Just oh, man. You know. 
that that game um just be, be, to, to talk about like the the thriller kind of mind messing with you um stuff this was a game that i like randomly picked up i hadn't heard anything about it and this was five or six years ago now i want to say mm -hmm. um and when you're playing the game and the game is lying to you while you're playing it to the point of like starting like the intense music, even though there's nothing happening, purposely lying to you and whispering in your ear from behind you and from in front of you to the left, like, man, there was so much about that game that was fantastic. So I am thrilled to see that there's a, a, a second part to that game. I'm so excited about that. I'm going to go ahead and I'll DM you the video of it. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm sorry. I know. I apologize. It's an Xbox exclusive and a day one on Games Pass. People don't understand how great a value, once these games start rolling out on Xbox, how great it is to have a service. Not only that you have over 100 games plus available to you for like $16 a month. I think I'm paying for right now or something like that. 16 right. bucks a month gets you access to all these games. Plus day one releases like Hellblade two. They didn't give it a date for 2024, but they'd said 2024 and I'm looking forward to it. Melinda. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's probably the one game, um, you know, aside from like a Diablo, right. Let's yeah. quantify things a little bit um, that I am, most disappointed about probably going to have to miss because I enjoyed the first one so much. It was such a unique gameplay experience. And uh, if, if this is the first time that you're hearing about it, please do yourself a favor and go and pick it up. Like ask for it from Santa and play it because it's phenomenal. And at that point, just on a PS4, I remember being really impressed by the graphics and that was just five years ago. So uh, I'm sure it still holds up, but man, what a cool game. And what a cool game indeed. Uh, it is something that I am looking forward to. And yes, it's a day one release. So definitely looking forward to that. But I do want to tell you that hell has frozen over. You want to know why? Why? Because Ubisoft is finally going to be releasing Skull and Bones. After <laughs> I think you and I, or I think, I think well, since you're only 18 and you just turned 18, I think you were right. probably in, in diapers when they Ubisoft originally uh, re, you know, announced Skull and Bones. Sure. Well, they, it's been gone through the, it's been going through the development ringer, Melinda, for right. almost a decade in all seriousness. And it's finally going to be released on February 16th of 2024. Your thoughts on Skull and Bones, another pirate game, but... If it does anything like what we saw from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and remember, it's the same publisher that's dealing with this, it, right. could, be something, it could be something pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely one uh, to to follow along and uh, and keep tabs on for sure. Um, you know, just just knowing who is behind it is enough to, I think, peak interest and, and have people with eyes on the game for sure. Once again, it is, of course, the PC Multiverse. It is Melinda Barkhouse Ross and me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Truly appreciate it. Want to go ahead and mention that the Best Game Direction Award winner was Alan Wake 2 over Baldur's mm -hmm. Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Brothers, and The Legend of Zelda. So Alan Wake, it looks like it's such a beloved game with the critics except for the fact when it came to the game overall. It's one of them going to be the ones like, okay, we couldn't give this the best game of the year, Melinda, but it looks like Alan Wake, we're going to give a whole bunch of uh, smaller awards to this game. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's a that's an all right consolation prize, isn't it? Yes. Instead of, get, instead of getting like the one award, we're going to give you, I don't know, two dozen small ones. I'll take the two dozen small ones. There you go. Absolutely. No. So that's... Happy for the folks at Remedy it basically trying to go ahead out there and put out there a game that absolutely a lot of people hopefully will love in Alan Wake 2. Uh, best score and best music goes to Final Fantasy 16, a game that I think is underrated, a game I think that I would actually like to play because it strays away from the traditional Final Fantasy gameplay, which I have not enjoyed over the years. I appreciate and respect it as a game series, obviously one of the greatest of all time. But I right. like the fact that this was more action oriented. Uh, it's gone a little bit under the radar, but it was mentioned in several different awards and categories this tonight in the Game Awards. And I'm hoping that will hopefully get a 
new audience in on this game. Yeah, it it definitely had a lot of a no, uh, nods tonight. That's for sure. And you know, uh, sometimes just the the acknowledgement that you were one of the best of the year is uh, is nothing to kind of laugh about, really. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it is such a great time to talk to you about what happened with the Game Awards. Millions of people were checking this out, obviously for the awards, but even more so for the announcements. Some of the announcements were still just so fantastic. Matthew McConaughey stopped by. All she right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Absolutely, because he stopped by. It is his first time ever participating in a video game. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes, his first time participating in a video game. He got a chance to go ahead and be part of a game from some very familiar faces. If you're interested in Mass Effect, these are former Bioware Mass Effect uh, you know, developers that have come together to create their own studio to go ahead in Texas. They're going ahead and, and coming together to create a brand new game that Matthew McConaughey is actually uh, going to join up with and that's and he'd be a part of. And that's called Exodus. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Exodus is all about. Had a nice trailer. Again, just all cutscenes. So... You take it for what it's worth. Uh, but when you hear Matthew McConaughey get together with some ex Bioware veterans, could be something that could be a hit, you know, coming up down the road. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to do all right. And if they need, you know, any any female voices uh, redone, I'm available. I just want to throw that out there. So, Maddie, give me a call. There you go. Absolutely. So, <laughs> definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing what can happen there because I'm hoping that'll emulate a lot from what they can take or what they hopefully will take from the Mass Effect series and make it their own. But definitely looking forward to seeing what Exodus will look like down the road. Also, yep. want to mention some more big announcements uh, that were made during the course. It was so funny. Like I said, you know, when they. When they stopped doing, uh, you know, as far as any trailers for any announcements or major games uh, announcements or things like that, they ran commercials for more games. So it's hard to keep track of everything. What was a game announcement? What was just a commercial? Things of that that nature. But I'll tell you what, um, a a good game that I think was really needed to go ahead and be announced out there that I really was enjoying and and appreciating the fact that it was coming out was uh let me see which one oh is it uh, yeah here it is it's gonna be it was gonna be the supernatural adventure usual june interesting usual june yes that one looked really interesting as far as an action adventure game with the, the i like the cell shaded games cell shaded is i'm always a sucker for cell shaded games and this is going to utilize that type of technology glad to see in 2023 and 2024 that cell shaded technology is not passe. It's something that we saw first saw in what the early 2000s. Uh, 13 is one of my favorite games from that era. So definitely looking forward to seeing what they can do with that game. Also, Black Myth Wukong has a release date. If you're into the Souls game, August 20th of next year is going to be when Black Myth Wukong, a definitely game, uh, definitely a game that takes very much away from the Souls. Is going to be coming out then. Your thoughts on Black Myth Wukong coming out in August of next year as a another turn for the Souls-like games that have come out? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe maybe the reason why GTA 6 is coming out in 2025 is to give all of these other games some breathing room. Um, I know that means that to me that August is going to be a pretty busy month, and uh, there's going to be a lot of folks staying home from the barbecue so they can play some some PlayStation or some Xbox for sure. Yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing what, uh, what they will do with that title when it comes out, mm -hmm. because again, the souls games, they're hard to play, Yeah, but they're so engrossing as we've seen so far. And, and not just the souls games themselves. It's, it's just the, that style, that genre has exploded into so much of a game uh, series that people are enjoying so much. And this will definitely be something that I think a lot of people will go ahead and enjoy. Uh, I also want to go ahead and mention that um, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which was a big hit 
uh, when it originally came out is getting a remake and that's coming out also in February around the end of the month in February, 2024. I don't know if you remember uh, brothers tales of two sons, but that was a fantastic, fantastic co-op game. And it looks like it's going to get a, a cool remake done for it. Nice. Are there any couch co-ops coming out or are those games just like so, so enormously passe now? Well, that one's going to do it. That one's going to yeah. hopefully fill the fill the bit for you and Robbie to get together. And speaking of Robbie, yeah, he's going <laughs> to be pointing out something good for him because mm -hmm. there's a new Warhammer that's coming out. Of course, there is. Of course, there, I know the cycle. Every year, <laughs> Warhammer games come out. Uh, but what was this? I think it's Space Marine. Let me go ahead and check it out. There's so many games that came out or it was announced. Uh, I'm looking forward right now. But yes. Warhammer Space Marine uh, 2, I think it's coming out here, and it did get announced here for 2024 release. There it is, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, coming September 9th of next year. Did he ever actually get a chance to play Space Marine number one? Uh, if he did, it was pre-me, so I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I would I would yell, but I don't want to blow out your eardrums. He's just in the next room, so. <laughs> okay, no worries. Well, he should tell you the right answer for him is that he had no life until he met you. It's true. It's true. He sat quietly in a room reading books until we met. That's correct. Absolutely. Just like Burgess <laughs> Meredith in the Twilight Zone in that yes. famous episode. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Best audio design for the Game Awards, Hi-Fi Rush, a really underrated game. Hopefully people check that out. It is on Games Pass and the Xbox, so hopefully you'll get a chance to get that that uh, you know in there. Best performance, Idris Elba lost on Best Performance. I know. Baldur's yeah. Gate 3's Neil Newborn, who came out in a, you know, I'll just say different outfit uh, to accept the award. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, best ongoing game, though. Can you imagine this from the time it got originally released to the time it is now? Best ongoing game experience goes to Cyberpunk 2077. Your thoughts on that as someone who originally bought into the Cyberpunk universe? Yeah, I obviously need to revisit because, uh, you know, I, I got like, I, I don't think I went for the top tier. I think I got like the second top tier that you could purchase for Cyberpunk 77. And we tried to play it for two or three days and we haven't touched it since. So perhaps some new, some of that new downloadable content will also make its way uh, perhaps into a stocking in the forms of a PlayStation card or, or something like that. But um, my goodness, uh, the, the roads and the lengths that you have to go through to get a game to work properly is still to me, it, it's it flabbergasted me i yeah i i still i have a hard time talking about cyberpunk 2077 it's i had such high expectations for it i know robbie did as well and i mean i'm thrilled to hear that you know they've managed to fix it at this point but i'm i'm still so upset about it that i i don't know that i'm ready even yet uh, to to take it up again, honestly, like it was incredibly upsetting how awful that was to try to play. So let me ask you this, and yeah. once again, it is the PCC multiverse. It is Melinda Barkhouse Ross and me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching, listening. Truly appreciate it. Going back to Sega, Sega, uh -huh. with uh, their announcement, they're not going into the future with games. Or these they they're going back in the past, of course, because you know that's what Sega does when yeah. it, when they you know really do bad, they'll just bring out a Yakuza game or Why a not? Sonic game. Yes, uh, but when they're really doing bad with some other releases, this time they're going back into the vault to go ahead. And I don't know if they're remaking, remastering, or creating new and just completely new versions because they say new games in development. Jet Set Radio, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Crazy Taxi. And no, I'm not talking like we're in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> These are actual games that are in development. Whether or not they're going to be re-releases, we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to take a look at right now here as far as the montage that was shown off at the Game Awards. But I have a feeling it's going to be just basically a lot we've seen so far. 
in the past, but they're going to be re envisionings. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're they're actually reimaginings of these ty classic titles for a new era. Your thoughts yeah, on Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, Shinobi, Jet Set Radio, and Crazy Taxi reimagined for a whole new audience? Yeah, I mean, much like me and continuously going back to watch Hercules and the Emperor's New Groove, uh, you know, at least once a week, um, there is something comforting in going back and, and picking up uh, something that you know very well. And I think that, you know, there's always room for that kind of thing. There, there's always room for that level of nostalgia. And, um, you know, when you get new stuff that happens in a universe that you are familiar with from 20 years ago, there's always something exciting about that. Even if you only play it for like three weeks and then you put it down and it just becomes something that may come up in conversation when somebody comes over to visit and you're like, dude, have you played the new whatever? Um, I just think that, uh, yeah, I'm I'm all for bringing back the the old member berries and and all of that stuff. I, I think it's great, and uh, I love to see companies who obviously know and care and love the product taking care of the product when they're doing this. And and I think that that's the important part of it. Absolutely. Wanted to go ahead and mention some award winners tonight. Best indie game. Now, personally, I thought Dave the Diver deserved it. It got a nine on IGN, and I actually watched the game quite a bit uh, and you know been offered to to play it uh, on a more than one occasion and it looks really uh, it's got a nice 8-bit style but it's also so diverse in all the things that you have to go ahead and manage and do and execute during the course of the game i thought dave the diver was going to win it but sea of stars another indie game that has been talked about a lot was the winner of best indie game so i can't say it's i'm too mad about it i just thought that dave the diver was a little bit better Best debut indie game was Cocoon, which I know a lot of people have talked about, but I thought Pizza Tower would be the one I thought would go with. Uh, but best mobile game, now get this, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, Monster Hunter Now, and Terra Nil. Uh, 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 not this time, Honkai Star Rail. Have you played Honkai Star Rail? I'm going to ask my daughter, one of my youngest daughter, who is a mobile fiend on the, as far as the gaming scene is concerned, if she's had a chance to check out in and out of Genshin Impact. Yeah, no, I, I, I haven't played any of those titles on my phone, to be completely honest. I'm more of a, well, I guess it's, well, I mean, no. Being 18, I'm a little bit young for puzzle games, but okay. uh, those are the kinds of games that I tend to play on my phone or like... Um, Oh gosh, what was it called? Uh, it's a little war game and you build up your little city and your little army and then people come and attack you and steal all your stuff. Clash of Clans? Um, no, but it's in, it's in that same vein. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one right now that I play, well, I was playing on a pretty regular basis. I've probably been kicked out of my clan at this point, but uh, there's one that was, uh, it's like a, has a vampire skin over it. So you recruit all of these really powerful vampires to come and fight in your army and, and all of that, that kind of stuff. Um, that, that one's a pretty fun game to play, but uh, yeah, it's, it's either that kind of a game or puzzle games on my phone. I, I don't know. I haven't really... I think I'm just behind the curve in terms of my age uh, for me to really get into mobile gaming that way. Let me touch on real quick some of the other awards that were given out on some of them that were given out at the Game Awards. A best action game, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. That's not a surprise because it's a very strongly rated game. I thought a lot of people were getting into that. But somehow they have a best action game and then a best action adventure game. Best well, yeah, action they are. game is primarily focused on com combat. Best action adventure game is best uh, is, is combines combat with traversal and pu puzzle solving. And yeah. gee, doesn't that sound like a title of a, of a, uh, of an award that Zelda should win? And sure mm -hmm. enough, it did. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no surprise there. Got to got to throw a bone to N Nintendo on that one. Best RPG of Baldur's Gate 3. That's no surprise there since it won overall best game of the year. Yeah. Best fighting game was the one I was really interested in because you had not just one, but two major fighting game releases this year in Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1. And stylistically, it was going to be, as far as content that's out there, yeah, 
Mortal Kombat 1, despite all the microtransaction cries and things of that nature, Mortal Kombat 1 probably had a little bit more diverse options as far as content, but the quality, I think, a little bit higher on Street Fighter 6 and quality won out over quantity. And Street Fighter 6 eked out the best fighting. Well, it actually knocked out Mortal Kombat 1 for the best fighting game. Your thoughts on Street Fighter 6, a game that has underperformed. It actually has not performed as well as hoped by Capcom as far as sales are concerned. It's on the, oh, I think it's only, what, it's a PlayStation exclusive, if that's correct? I Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, all that I can think about, though, when we talk about these games is how bad Mortal Kombat looked on the Switch. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And that's probably why we're lost right there is because. It probably, yeah. That, that's that's all that I think about when you when you talk about Mortal Kombat now. <laughs> yes. So... Oh, dear. That was so bad. Oof. But yeah, Street Fighter VI, uh, no, actually, it is available on all platforms, uh, PS5, Xbox Series, yeah. S and X. So yeah, uh, I know that PlayStation was heavily uh, d uh, actually going ahead and showcasing it. But yeah, it is underperformed, which is sorry to see, even though it has won the best fighting game that's out there. Best sports and racing game, that's no doubt, Forza Motorsport. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, even though it's... This one is not as fun to play or it's not getting the kind of uh, fan reception, as it were, uh, as the Horizon series does. The motorsports for all those gearheads who really love their sims yeah. as, as in the driving genre. So, yeah, it was definitely no doubt that was going to win there. So, yeah, definitely a great list uh, as far as games are concerned. Best sim strategy game is Pikmin 4. And the best multiplayer game is Baldur Gate, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, of course. Yeah, so anything yeah. Baldur's Gate 3, seemingly they almost won everything. Uh, so yeah, definitely definitely a great victory today for Baldur's Gate 3. Before we get into some of the final, uh, uh, actually, trailers that were announced, and some of the th things I want to go ahead and, and talk about in regards to that, your thoughts on Baldur's Gate 3? Oh, actually, most, most anticipated game is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So that was kind of uh, not, not too much of a surprise because people always anticipate it, but that not everybody buys it. But your thoughts right. on Baldur's Gate 3 before we head on out? Yeah, just, you know, and I, if I remember correctly, it was a game that nobody had really put a whole lot of stock in. And uh, it just just took off. And then all of a sudden, everybody was talking about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, all of your Twitch, Twitch, <laughs> your Twitch streamers um, were playing it and getting caught by exposing naughty bits on Twitch and trying not to get banned. And <laughs> Yeah, who's who's having you know, a relationship with the with the bear or you know the oh yeah, yeah there there was yeah. so much stuff that happened so many shenanigans and if the word shenanigans doesn't sum up Baldur's Gate three it definitely sums up the game that it's based on and that is Dungeons and Dragons so um, you know if, if maybe you have just moved to a new city and you haven't found your new D and D group yet picking up Baldur's Gate three just makes a ton of sense I I think it itches the same scratch. Um, or scratches the same itch, that makes more sense, um, that D&D &D does. Mind you, it's not sitting around the table eating Doritos while you, you know, bonk some goblins on the head, but um, it's not far off from it, really. Um, it, it's good stuff all around. And, you know, it's the proof is in the pudding with the amount of war awards that it's won. The proof is in the pudding with the amount of people who are still talking about it after, you know, it's been out now for months and months. And um, it just literally came out seconds after it won the game of the year on Xbox, but it is not on Games Pass at this point. Right. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if you're even curious about that type of game, you might as well pick up the one that's won all of the awards. Uh, if that's not usually your jam, you, you might be want the one that you want to take a bit of a chance on. It is Baldur's Gate 3, the big winner at the Game Awards. It is now available on all the platforms that is on PC, PS5, and now Xbox Series S and X. Go ahead and get it today. The difference between the S and X was the co-op. That's why the slowdown happened. So you cannot uh, play couch co-op, I believe, on the Xbox Series S version, but the X version is doing just fine. Then again, if you get an Xbox Series X now reduced to $150 less at $350, I got the Diablo 4 version as I showed you. Yes, you so, did. Yep, absolutely. So Gleefully showed me at that. <laughs> yes, I was not trying to troll you. I was trying to inform you 
that the Diablo 4 and Forza, Forza Motorsport versions are available at $350. So just study my know. only my only concern, Gerald, when you sent that photo was that it wasn't strapped down in a seatbelt. I I felt like that was a risky move on your part. Yeah. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta strap those in. You gotta keep them safe. Oh, it was safe. I was holding it the entire time. I was like, had a hand on it as I was driving. One hand driving, one hand holding the Xbox Series X. But Perfect. before we head on out, my friend, just a great <laughs> evening. I, I really am surprised at some of the trailers that came out. What was the big reveal that you thought was the biggest winner of the day for you as far as either awards or the biggest reveal that you saw that that's really going to get your interest? And don't say GTA 6 because that came out days ago and everybody knows about that. Well, I mean that that is pretty impressive, though. That overshadowed um, that that was like cast a shadow on everything. That so that's that's another reason why I didn't like the trailer coming out when it did because it even though it came out earlier this week, it cast a shadow over everything else shown off today. Sure, yeah. Um, honestly, I, I think. Um, oh gosh, I'm not. I don't know. What were your favorites? What was your biggest favorite reveal? <sighs> My favorite reveal was Marvel Blade. Yeah, uh, and then the OD, OD with Hideo Kojima. That one really surprised me. I knew they were working on something, but I didn't know what. Uh, and then working with Jordan Peele on it, so you know it's going to go into some really very different things. Like Alan Wake Two, you to me it's going to resemble a lot what Alan Wake Two did as far as supernatural and mystery and a little tinge on horror there. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds announced by Capcom. That's coming in 2025. So new the Monster Hunter, the last Monster Hunter game was really, really uh, popular with a lot of people. So definitely something that is going to be done here with Monster Hunter Wilds. But yeah, I would probably say OD Marvel's Blade, and then of course Hellblade Two, which looked absolutely it was the best looking game i think of the game awards i'm gonna tell you right now that's probably the best looking game because it was actually showing gameplay mm -hmm. that looked like a cutscene. the character models were looking so good and i'm gonna again i'm gonna dm you uh this as far as it's concerned on when it comes to uh sensua's uh sacrifice hellblade 2 i really think the level of detail is simply something I've rarely seen in a video game. Yeah, honestly, I, I know the, the first Hellblade was phenomenal. I And if I'm not mistaken, kind of like a relatively short game to play. I, mm -hmm. I, yes. I, I There's something rolling around it, in my head about 35 hours or something. Something like that, but it also touched on some very, uh, how should I say, um, sensitive subjects in regards to mental health. That yes. very few games approached in that original one, which I think went also went a long way as well. Yeah, and it really is one of those games, and I'm I don't usually play with with the headset on. Um, I it just it's heavy, and I wear headsets enough. Um, but when you're playing the Hellblade game, you have to have the headset on. If you don't, and you're not listening to like your surround sound in your gaming room as loud as possible, you're missing a real facet of the game that makes it feel spooky and dangerous and creepy. And when you get to the point in the game where you're really questioning if the voice is telling you the truth or not, um, it's just, uh, it's just layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of phenomenal stuff in the first one. So, yeah, super excited for Hellblade 2. That's amazing. Well, when I'm done here, go check it out. I popped it on your DM. Definitely Will check do. it out. It is Sensua's Sacrifice Hellblade mm -hmm. 2. Looking forward to that. And looking forward to all the games that were announced. I know I'm going to be discussing more of it on our next show, The Pop Culture Cosmos with TJ Johnson, and also as well, Josh Peterson, who could not make our live show today. So they said, can we please still talk about it? Please, 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 please. So you know what I said? We're going to dedicate a great portion of Monday's show to that as well. But Melinda, it's been a great episode. I have kept you away from your husband of so many years on your anniversary away too long. I'm sorry that yeah, on your anniversary, you were cheating on him with me. Yeah. <laughs> virtually. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. Any last thoughts, my friend, before we head on out? 
um, yeah, do yourself a, pay, a favor. And uh, when you when you're done listening to the podcast today, uh, go and pick up the first Hellblade game if you never played it before. Uh, and if you did, if you did have it, it's time to revisit it. Um, I, that might be what happens. Well, I only have one day off this week, so maybe not this week, but maybe over the Christmas break. <laughs> I'll have a minute and I'll be able to sit down and play some Hellblade because it, oh God, it's just such a good game. Mm, so good. Check out our friends at Retro City Games for any late deals on what's going on with any games from the past that might be something you might need to catch up on or go ahead and check us out here as far as what we talk about in the video game industry right here at the Pop Culture Cosmos. So for Melinda Barkhouse Ross, this is Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much again for watching and listening. It is truly appreciated. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the PCC multiverse. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great day.